Welcome to Chapter 6, CB Linear Tonic, CBT Generation 1. In this chapter, you're going to learn the assembly process of the unit. My name is Jared Warren, and I'll be your host for this course. It's a great day to fix transmission, so let's get started. We're going to start assembling the transmission with the front bell housing. Um, in this unit, there's a, quite a few O-rings in between the case halves and stuff that we need to pay attention to. So up front here we got an uh, O-ring that goes in the uh, secondary pressure um, port right here. And in the converter apply pressure port there's another O-ring here. And on the lockup re release there is a ceiling ring. So we have our uh, input drum built. We've checked our bearings and everything like that on the input and the input drum itself. Go ahead and put that into the case. And then we're gonna wanna take an H gauge and measure from the case right here down to the bearing. And then flip the H gauge over. Put your shim in the, uh, the cover here and measure from the, the gasket surface down to the shim. Uh, we're looking for clearance. It should be roughly three to six thousandths. Um, here's the part numbers for the um, driven reduction gear and the front input um, shims. All right, so after we get the um, shims correct, um, we're going to wa want to make sure we install the stator and seal on the stator. And then we're gonna go ahead and assemble the pump. Uh, in install the, a new front seal, of course. Go ahead and um, put the drive and driven um, sprockets into the front pump chain housing and put the snap rings on those. Go ahead and use some anaerobic sealer, uh, seal this uh, pump chain to the cover. And then we're going to then we're going to install the whole assembly, uh, some more anaerobic sealer on the back side of that, and go ahead and install and torque uh, all the 12 milli millimeter head bolts to 17.7 foot pounds. So now we're going to flip the differential uh, in the bell housing over so the bell housing is on the bench. Uh, there is one seal over here um, you want to make sure that's in place use some trans gel to to keep that into place also this aluminum tube you can install it now or later it doesn't matter uh, there's two o-rings on each side of this tube this is a differential here of course uh, this differential will it was fried uh, because jiffy lube forgot to put oil in this differential so of course you're going to want to change your ring and pinion on this we go ahead and assemb assemble the pump assembly. There's two O-rings onto the uh, pump housing here. Glue those into place with trans gel. Go ahead and tighten the uh, pump bolts to 75 inch pounds. And then go ahead and put this housing with the anaerobic sealer on it. And tighten that down to 31.7 foot pounds. All right, so there's a tube up here on the top of the diff, uh, the bell housing. You want to go ahead and blow through that. It's kind of a, um, a lube tube. Make sure there's no debris in that or anything. You also have a steel tube here with a couple of O-rings on it. Go ahead and put that into place here. And lube the, the seals up pretty good. This is a picture of the same tube that was on the last slide, but with it removed. Put both O-rings on there and install that. On the secondary shaft, you have a ceiling ring. Go ahead and install the ceiling ring in there. And then we're going to um, install the um, pulleys. Um, some people elect to put the chain on and install the pulleys all together. Uh, you can do it either way. If you install the uh, pulleys, you have uh, a seal on this bolt that retains the front primary pulley. Uh, there's one here on the outside of the case. And we have more one more retainer uh, for the secondary pulley. It's bolted on right here. And the long tube chain guide 
goes on the driver's side. There's a little O-ring on the end of this tube also. Now on the fastener side, we have the, the chain guide uh, tube. This one has no O-ring on it. You can slide that into place. And then there's two more pulley retaining bolts. One here on the left. And then this front one on the outside of the case does have a seal on it also. All right, to get your chain on, go ahead and put your puller um, on. Before you put the puller on, make sure you slide the chain over uh, the pulley. Put your puller on, tighten the puller down to pull up on that um, secondary pulley. And then you could slide the chain over the primary pulley. Some people choose to, like I said earlier, to go ahead and put that puller um, on the secondary pulley, pull the puller up to separate the pulleys, and to put the chain and pulleys on all as one set. You can do it that way also. Then you want to also uh, install your chain guides. Uh, these plastic pieces, there's four of them. They're all four are, are identical. Go ahead and clip those into place and then snap them onto the, the chain guide pins on both sides. After that, we're going to go ahead and put some anaerobic sealer on the, the case. And we are going to go ahead and put the case down and torque them to 30.2 foot pounds. After your case is installed, there's two, two tubes that are installed from the pan. Put new O-rings on these tubes and install those into place. All right, so here's your forward dumb drum. We've already built this clutch back up um, on the first video. There's a shim that goes on the back side of this drum. You have a torrent and bearing. The uh, flat side goes to the um, drum itself. You have a spacer on top. Your forward gear and sub uh, hub. And you have your torrent and bearing, the curved end. Um, the large outside curved in right here uh, goes to the to the gear and then install your ring gear and your snap ring um, in this picture um, over to the right you see um, the planet is installed here um, you can do it this way you have to reach in and with the screwdriver and turn this drum to get that planet to, to spline into the reverse clutches um, I have found it easier to put this planet in uh, reverse housing. A couple more O-rings over here on the case also. Make sure we get these, these two O-rings in place. Alright, so here's your reverse housing. Or intermediate housing with the reverse uh, clutches in it. Uh, this this planet has a, a torrent and bearing on the bottom side of it. You can go ahead and spline this planet into the um, reverse clutches. Also go ahead and put a new filter in here. Anaerobic sealer on this. And then go ahead and um, turn the planet, line the planet and ring gear up. And get your housing all the way down and tighten that down. 18.4 uh, foot-pounds is the torque for the housing. So now your housing is on. We can um, we can go ahead and put the transfer gear in. There's a couple shims on the transfer gear up here. Also, one note: don't forget this hidden bolt down in here on the inside. Uh, it, it's easy to forget about. So now our clut uh, transfer clutch drum is all the way together. Uh, put the three ceiling rings on the um, shaft itself. Slide that into place also. Install, install the park pawl and the return spring and pin. Install your torrent and bearing and your caged needle bearing and then spline in your output shaft. And 
At this time, you can use the H gauge, measure from the, uh, the, the case up to the bearing, and flip it over and measure down into the, the housing itself. And then do the same thing for your um, transfer gear itself. After you get your clearance set up, go ahead and torque the bolts to 18.4 inch pounds. All right, so on the valve body, here's a picture of the upper valve body. Um, you have your forward and reverse control valves, TCC, all wheel uh, drive um, or transfer clutch uh, valve. Uh, some some lockup lock valves also. So, so if, if we have, have a, a shuttering shut issue or something along those lines, we're going to want to look at your all-wheel dr drive control valve number seven, uh, your ratio control valves are number five and number six, your TCC valves are number two, three, and four. So um, those are the valves for your upper valve body. Still work on the upper valve body. We have three relief springs here, um, little valves and springs. The B, this one here, the valve is different and the spring is different, so pay attention to that. We have three filters. The spring goes in, then the filter itself. Here's your, lo your lower valve body. Uh, we have sec uh, secondary rag valve here, number nine. Definitely want to take a look at that. Uh, your primary down limit valve is number 10. Primary up control for ratio change is number 12. Uh, 13 is your solenoid regulator valve. That's another one that likes to wear out. And number 14, this boost valve. We've seen these wear out also. All right, so here is your um, solenoids, ohm resistance, and what color wire is going on. So on the forward and reverse, we have uh, 5.3 ohms, and there's a blue and white wire going to the solenoid. Your lockup solenoid over here uh, is 16 ohms, and a yellow wire is going to it. Uh, lockup duty is 12 ohms. Gray and light green wire is going to this right here. Your primary down is also 12 ohms. Gray and blue wire going to this solenoid. And your primary up is a gray and purple wire. These three solenoids right here are pretty easy to get mixed up. Uh, the wiring will move around. So make sure these uh, you match the colors of wires to the location of the solenoid. Your all-wheel drive uh, transfer clutch solenoid is 3.2 ohms. And it has a gray and orange wire going to it. And then your secondary linear control solenoid, 6.6 .6 ohms, it has one red wire going to it. A lot of these wires, like right here and right here, um, have grounds to them. These are for the solenoid grounds. Make sure those wires are uh, in good shape and tight, or you're going to get some solenoid codes. Go ahead and install the valve body. Um, to, and torque the bolts down to 6.6 .6 foot-pounds. Plug in your wiring harness right here, and also this one bolt right here with the arrow is the one long bolt. The rest are all the same size. Go ahead and install your filter, and, uh, and your pan bolt, pans down. We're going to torque your pan bolts to 6.6 .6 foot-pounds. Here's some additional torque information chart for you guys. This will conclude our chapter on rebuild assembly of the Subaru Linearitronic CVT Generation 1 transmission. We want to thank you for your participation in your virtual training solutions powered by ATRA. Until next time, let's keep fixing transmissions together.